Um, welcome to the webinar about unit testing and TESI. And for our first step, I would like to show you uh, the proposed agenda. Um, first, in the first point, we will test. Uh, we will talk about uh, unit testing of C programs in general. So, uh, which uh, bugs can you find with unit testing? Which not? What are the benefits and so on? In the second part, we will talk about how unit testing works with TESI. This will also include a live presentation of the tool TESI and uh, after that we will have a summary and see what we have covered and what we should do in a subsequent webinar and then you have the possibility to post questions uh, um, by writing to our webinar tool. Okay, let's start with the first uh, point and if we talk about unit testing of C programs, the important question is what is a unit? And this is uh, answered here. If we talk about C programs, a unit for unit testing is a function in the sense of C. Some standards also call this a module uh, and uh, in this case also a module uh, is a function in the sense of C and a module for unit testing has nothing to do with a module as a C source module, uh, so please keep this in mind. If we know that uh, our test objects are the functions in the sense of C, uh, we can depict a complete test applic uh, software application. Um, it looks like this. As an example, the red building blocks uh, denote the functions or our test objects, the units on the test and the red arrows uh, gives the calling hierarchy. And if we would like to answer the question, what does unit testing mean for such a unit? We pick a unit that is in a hierarchy, so that means it has a calling unit above and a calls itself another unit. This means um, we now uh, talk about what does unit testing mean to the unit here in the middle which has a calling function above and calls itself another function. And this is answered on the next slide. Unit testing means that all units are tested one by one, isolated from the rest of the application in a comprehensive manner. This means isolation means uh, isolation is to the calling function. This is here, and isolation is also to a called function. If the function on the test or our unit would call other functions, there are two advantages of the isolation to the calling function. The first uh, advantage is the test starts immediately. If you compare the situation of unit testing with the situation of system testing, uh, in system testing you need to wait maybe uh, a certain time until the function you want to test is called or you have to take special measures to get this function called at all. This is not necessary during unit testing, uh, the test starts immediately. The second advantage of the uh, isolation to the calling function is that you can use any test data, arbitrary test data. This is especially important if you have defensive programming in the calling function here which maybe do not pass a null pointer to the test object, but the test object itself checks if a pointer that is passed to it is a null pointer and this means during, unit, during system testing you will never achieve the situation where a null pointer is passed to your test object and therefore you cannot uh, find out if your test object reacts correctly to a null pointer passed. This is very easy during unit testing uh, to generate a test case where a null pointer is passed and you can see if your test object behaves accordingly. These are the two advantages of the isolation to the calling functions. First one, test starts immediately. The second one, uh, you can use arbitrary test data. The isolation to the called function here, um, if your test object calls other test objects, so during unit testing usually these calls are replaced by calls to so-called stub functions. You can think of a, as a, of a stub function as a placeholder for the called functions. This has also some advantages. The first one is you do not need these, an implementation of these called functions, so you can um, make a 
top-down approach, you do not have to have an implementation or a stable implementation of these functions that are called by your test object. The second advantage is that um, if a stub function is called, it also may return a value to your test object and inputs to your test objects and therefore oh just a moment don't know what has happened here and um, this means if your if the call function returns a value into the test object this is an input to the test object and as with from the call function you can return arbitrary values from a stub function to your test object and therefore check if your test object uh, copes with all values that are possible from as a return value from the stub function. This means everything what is outside of this blue line is under your control by the isolation of the unit under test. This means uh, if a test passes one time it should also pass the other time because such a test is a deterministic test. This means you can reproduce all the tests all the time and this is a prerequisite for regression testing and regression testing yeah, is a common requirement of all safety critical standards that I know that is very clear. You have to be able to repeat the tests that you have done um, before. For instance, if you have you use a new compiler version or if you have made a slight changes in your test object. Let's have a closer look on this blue line here which isolates the the test object from the rest of the application. I call this blue line often the interface of the test object and what the test object, uh, the, the interface consists of is depicted in the next page. Mainly the interface consists of all the input variables to our test object and also output variables to from our test object. If the test object has a return value, the return value automatically is an output value and unit testing in general checks if a given set of input values result in an expected output values of output values. So unit testing uh, compares input values against output values. And usually these input values are parameter or global variables and return values and global variables. But it's also possible that uh, our test object calls another function. In this case, this call to another function also um, is in the interface, uh, belongs to the interface and uh, the interface also gives you an indication if the called function here has parameters. If yes, these parameters are output of the test object and if this called function here for instance has a return value, this return value is an input to our test object. Please keep this in mind. So if we, if we uh, see that um, unit testing checks input values against expected output Output values, you can uh, deduct that some functions benefit more of unit testing than other do. I have here an example of a function that benefits more from unit testing. As you see here, a function which does calculations, a lot of calculations. This means all functions or units on the test which do calculation, complex decisions, analysis of data, generation of data, such things, data processing in general, um, benefit a lot of unit testing because unit testing tests the logic algorithmic behavior of a unit on the test and the more logic and algorithmic behavior a unit has, the better suited or the, necess the more necessary is unit testing for it. On the opposite, uh, naturally, there exists also units which benefit less from unit testing. I have also an example for such a, a, a unit here. And if you have a closer look on this unit, you will find out that there is obviously only one possible test case. Uh, there are no input values, there are no, uh, yeah, uh, and, and uh, therefore, because it's only one test case, it's, it's rather clear what this test case should do and um, 
yeah, a unit test will prove that it does this, but it, I think it's more important in this case to make a review about um, what, what is the meaning of the values that are written to the registers of this um, port, which is initialized here, and to find out if maybe there is another, another register that should be initialized, which is uh, not implemented here or something like that. Please note that the fact that we are talking here about a unit which uh, accesses directly hardware, this has nothing to do if this um, function benefits from unit testing or not. Um, the only thing is that it might be a little bit more complicated to test such a unit which accesses hardware, directly hardware, than other functions. What are the benefits of unit testing? Yeah, during unit testing you test small test objects. This reduces the complexity of test case specification, so it's much more easier to find test cases for units uh, which test a unit comprehensively than to find these test cases for system testing, which do the same thing. Sometimes it's impossible to have such test cases for system testing. As a consequence of this, that we have small test objects, this means um, if you have found an illegal behavior of your unit under test, uh, it's rather easy to find out where the bug is because you have only a small area to search for this bug, only the unit on the test could include this error and it's not the complete application that you have search for this, to search for this error. But what is much more important are um, the third point here, which is given in bold, um, unit testing finds error very early after their creation. This means as soon as you have uh, edited a bug, you are able to find it and you are able to delete this bug or correct this bug as long as it is with logic algorithmic bugs. So, so unit testing mainly finds logic algorithmic bugs. There are some kind of bugs which can not be found by unit testing. This is for instance if you have a memory leak or something like that or double free or something like that on index out of bounds. These are test uh, bugs which are hard to find during unit testing. Okay, so this is suppose a general part about unit testing. Now let's come to uh, the part where I would like to explain um, how unit testing works with TESI. And as we have seen, a unit under test is a function in the sense of C, so unit testing with TESI starts by specifying the C source module in which the unit which you want to test is in. And you specify the C source module and then TESI analyzes this C source module and finds out which functions are in it, which means which test objects are in this C source module and what is, is much more important, TESI also determines the interface of each test object which is in this module. And an interface we have learned are um, the input variables and the output variables to your test object and this means in a simplified case the first two lines here in this table would specify a very simple interface. For instance, this interface would say yeah, there's a variable B which is an input variable, there's a variable C which is both input and output variable, it's clear a variable can be input and output at the same time. Think of a global variable which is incremented by your test object. This variable is first written by your test, uh, read by your test object, this means input, then it is incremented and then it is written back and therefore it is an output. So it's input and output at the same time, so it's possible. And the interface here, the example interface, uh, has also a variable D which is output and it also has a return value and the return value as we know is always output if it exists. So uh, this is a very simplified uh, interface usually um, and we will see later for instance also the data types of the variables and so on belong to the interface. The interface gives us the structure of a test case. And as we know, a test case consists of values 
for the input variables prior to the test and the expected values for the output values after the test. And therefore, we can generate or create a test case by specifying values for the input variables. For instance, this test case in the third line here says prior to the test A should be 5, B should be 3, and C should be 4 prior to the test and I expect it to be 8 after the test, D should be 17 after the test, and the return value of the function on the test should be 30, 42. This is a test case and uh, to specify uh, the values of the test case and to specify how many test cases you need is the only thing you have to put work in when working with TESI. The rest of everything is done more or less automatically. The next step would be that TESI generates something which is called the test application and uh, how this looks like is depicted on the next slide. The test application mainly consists of the test object, so the unit on the test, our function that we want to test. It's usually the unchanged source code of our test object and um, additionally there is uh, generated parts, the blue parts here are uh, generated by TESI and together with the test object it forms a complete standalone application. This means it includes an own main and it has a startup code for, for instance, for an um, embedded microcontroller and if you have said you want to create, you want TESI to create stub functions or everything, something like that, uh, this code is also generated automatically by TESI. Please note that test data is not included in the test application. This means uh, the test application does not grow if you add additional test cases. This is very important for small microcontrollers with a limited memory space because um, yeah, if the test application fits in the memory, you can execute as many test cases as you want, even on the small microcontroller and uh, the test, because the test application does not grow with the number of test cases. This test application is generated in, in C code uh, and uh, the next step is to compile this test application into something executable and you have generally two possibilities uh, for the compiler that you use for this comp compilation. Um, the first possibility is depicted on the left hand side here. Um, you can use the GNU C compiler which is installed with TESI and then the test application would be compiled into a Windows application and an EXE file and then you can exe execute this Windows application on the PC. You do not need embedded hardware or something like that. Uh, this has advantages and disadvantages. Um, the advantage is that you have not to have an embedded cross compiler, you can start uh, immediately with the GCC compiler. Uh, the disadvantage is that you sometimes are, um, yeah, you compile for a, a Windows application, not for an embedded microcontroller. You might have a different integer sizes, you might have different NDNS uh, between the, the, the processor on your PC and the embedded microcontroller you are using, and this gives some some might give some problems for the tests and also uh, it's necessary if you use a GCC compiler that, that, that your test object is plain NCC and that the test object does not contain embedded uh, keywords of an embedded cross compiler like, like SFR bit or, or Pragmas or something like that. So, this is the first possibility, you can use a GNU C compiler if you don't want this or if you don't can this do because your test object is not NCC, you are able uh, to direct TESI to use the cross compiler for your embedded system um, and uh, then TESI would compile the test application not in a Windows application but in a binary for your microcontroller and um, this would also have the advantage that the same integer size is used, that the same endianness is used because you use exactly the compiler that you use later for your product, so this means also you use the same optimization level and so on. 
this compiler compiles the test application in a binary for the microcontrollers that you are using and the next step is then to, to execute this uh, test application and there are again several possibilities. Uh, TESI uses as an interface for uh, execution a debugger for the microcontrollers, a debugger that you usually use to, to test your code where you can set breakpoints, where you do line steps in, where you watch variables. TESI uses this, interface, this debugger as an interface, loads a test application in it and then executes it. Uh, to what the debugger is connected, if it's connected to an instruction set simulator and it is running completely on a PC without embedded hardware, or if this debugger is connected to, say, uh, a GTEC debugger or a BDM debugger, uh, which is then uh, connected to a, a, a real um, target hardware, a real microcontroller, is not of much importance for TESI. It is but it is important for the relevance of the test. As we have seen, if we are here, the relevance of the test might be low because of different integer sizes, for instance. If we use such a possibility, the relevance of the test is high because we are using the real embedded compiler and the real embedded microcontroller, and this gives us a high relevance for the test. Let's have a closer look on the situation, execution on uh, instruction set simulator on the PC and execution on the actual target hardware, um, just um, to compare these two situations. Uh, on the left hand side we have the execution in an instruction, simula instruction set simulator, it's pure software execution. On the right hand side we have the the situation where the debugger that TESI is communicating with is connected to a debug system, for instance, an in circuit emulator or BDM debugger or whatever, and this in turn is con connected to the actual target hardware, to the microcontroller on the actual target hardware. For TESI, it does not make much difference because TESI in both cases communicates with the debugger and TESI actually does not really know uh, to what this debugger is connected. Okay, if the test application is loaded by TESI via the debugger in the test execution environment, whatever it is, um, then the tests are executed. The execution of the tests uh, is in four steps. The tests, these four steps are uh, depicted here. The first step is that the test input data is transferred from the PC where TESI runs on to the test execution environment, this means for instance to the actual, uh, to, to the memory of the actual uh, microcontroller. In step two, the test is executed. In step three, the result data is fetched back from the memory of the target system to the PC where TESI runs on. And in the fourth step, TESI compares the actual result with the expected result. And it, if it is equal, then the test has passed and yeah, if it's not equal then the test has failed and in this case TESI provides a possibility to uh, execute a single test case, for instance a failed test case um, separately and also uh, TESI can um, then set a breakpoint at the beginning of the test object. This means such a test would not run automatically to the end, but it will stop in the debugger and gives the user the possibility to step through a failed test case and to see the variables and to see which branches are taken and which not. And this allows very easily to find out why a certain test case does not yield the expected result. Okay. This was, in theory, how TESI would work and I would like now to go to a live presentation and to show you how this uh, is done in reality and I have already started uh, TESI here and you see TESI is uh, an, an application which is based on Eclipse and uh, this means also you have here different perspectives for different tasks. Uh, let's switch to the overview task uh, where, we, where we start with testing and um, yeah, we will see all the perspectives or some of the perspectives during the presentation here. Testing usually start by creating a new test uh, collection. I can give it a name, for instance, 
webinar and below this test collection I can make an arbitrary uh, folder structure. Um, I just uh, make one folder to show how it works and below the folders and at some point in time I have to create what is called a TESI module and I can also give it a name if I want. Okay, and I have said um, we need to specify two things to TESI uh, to start testing. The first thing is the, um, the uh, compiler that we want to use. For this presentation here, we use the GNU GCC compiler which is installed with TESI, which is all, all, um, always available in this pull-down menu. The second thing is we have to specify to TESI the C source code in which our test objects is test object is in and we browse for the C source module and I have uh, here a uh, C source module which is called is value in range and uh, this includes our test object that we want as an ex uh, to use as an example. I would like to give you a view of the C source module uh, so that you can see what how the test objects look like that we want to test. Uh, the test object here is called is value in range and it solves a very simple problem that you want to find out if a, a certain value is inside a range and this range is given by a start value and the length. This means if the start value is 5 and the length is 2, for instance, 5 would be inside the range, 6 would be inside the range, 7 should not be inside the range according to the specification, uh, but uh, this a test case with this data will fail because an error in the implementation. Okay, normally you know how your test object looks like uh, and therefore we can go back to the overview perspective and if we click on this sign here, TESI then analyzes the C source module and finds out which test objects are in it and we have here only one test object inside of this module. The name of it is, uh, the function name is value in range and we can also see the interface of this test object and to see an interface we go to the interface editor perspective inside TESI which is uh, used to show interfaces and to edit interfaces. The interface is displayed here and because we have a very simple test object we have no external functions, no other local function, we have only one function inside of this C source module. We have no external variables and we have no global variables. But we have two parameters. The first one is a structure. Uh, this structure depicts the, the, the range of the problem and it uh, we can see that this structure consists of two components. The first one gives us the start value of the range and the second one gives us the length of the range and the important thing here is that TESI has found out that for both components the passing direction is in. This means TESI has found out that the values of this components are uh, of the structure are input to our test object. This means we have to specify values for these variables prior to the test. And uh, TESI has also found out uh, that uh, the, uh, the second parameter, this variable v1, is also an input variable v1 is a value that we, uh, for which we want to find out if it's inside the range or not. Uh, so all the parameters are input. There is one output variable of this um, interface, of this um, um, of this test object. This is a return value of this test object. Um, yeah. As I said, I said um, the interface gives us the structure of a test object of a test case and test cases are specified in another perspective of TESI in the test data editor perspective and therefore I switch now to the test data editor perspective and I can create new test cases here by simply clicking on here and this gives me a column in this test data view and if I expand the structure I can in put test data for the start value of the range and I use 5 as in the example and 2 and I want to uh, and 2 for the length of the range and I would like to know if 6 is inside the range and if the start value is 
five and the length is two, then six is inside the range. Therefore, therefore I specified yes as the expected result of this test case and I can save this test case and I can then, for instance, copy this test case and paste it. This gives me an additional column here, a second test case and for the second test case I change the value of V1 and I use 7 and if you recall correctly, um, for the start of, if the start of the if the range is 5 and the length is 2, then 7 should not be inside the range. Therefore, I specify no as the expected result um, and I know this, that this test case will fail because I know there is a programming error in the test object. Okay, specifying the test cases is uh, everything that we need to do. And there are different ways of specifying test cases uh, in TESI. This one that I have shown you here is a manual interactive way. Uh, I have not thought much about the test cases. I just defined two test cases. And now we are able to run these test cases by just clicking on the play button here. Um, this will execute both test cases automatically and we will see the result. We have now a result which is green and red. Red means the test case has failed and this is because yeah, we expected no and we got yes. Uh, it's also possible to display the, uh, both uh, the expected and the actual result here, but it's not uh, rather necessary. At that point in time we are also able to create a test report. Uh, usually you would not do this at this point because we have uh, still failed test cases, but I would simply like to show you how such a test report, a very simple test report looks. You have here, uh, okay, two test cases, one passed, one passed, one failed, and you have here the complete test data of such a test case. It means the second test case with, with, with the input variables with the input values 5, 2 and 7, uh, we expected uh, yeah, um, no and the actual return value was yes and it was not equal and therefore this test case failed. So I close this. Uh, by the way, we see here a test report in PDF format. Um, so it's for humans to see. Uh, a test report is also automatically created in XML format. Uh, this is readable for programs so you could, uh, yeah, evaluate a test result also by uh, passing an XML output of the test report. Okay, now we have uh, here the problem of the failed test case here and as I said TESI is able to execute a test case separately and TESI is also able to execute this test case with a breakpoint at the beginning of the test object and I would show you this. I click on this um, I check this defined breakpoint and if I could, uh, execute this test case here, uh, the test will not run to the end but will stop in the debugger. In our case, the debugger is a CDT debugger which is included with an Eclipse and we are now here at the beginning of our test object and we can see the variables which are the variables value which are used in this test step. This is 5, 2 and 7, that means we we use the values of the second test step and we are now able to step inside our test object and uh, we see which branches we take and not and I would expect to have the return no in line 31 to be executed but if I execute another test step I see that this send branch of the second if is not executed and uh, the problem is here is that I should have for instance an equal sign here. Uh, I should have greater than equal the equal and not only greater than. And as soon as you know what the correction could be, you can run the test case to the end and then you can go from this interface if you want to the test object source code and I can insert an equal sign here um, which should correct the bug and then I, I save this correction here, go back to the test data editor and then I execute the test case again this time without setting a breakpoint here um, and now I execute the second test case 
uh, automatically to the end, TESIC generates a new test application which is necessary because we have changed the source code of the test object and we see now the result of the second test scan is now changed to green. This means with the correction we get the expected result. I have deliberately not executed the first test case uh, just to demonstrate that we do not know if the first test case is still green or um, by, by in spite of that we have changed the source code of the test object. Uh, to verify that the first test case is will still pass, we have to re-execute this first test case. This means we have to do a regression test for the first test case and or if you have uh, test automation in place like you have if you use TESI, it is very easy to perform regression tests on as many test cases as you want by just clicking on the execute all tests button and I have done this now and we see that the first test case is still green uh, in spite of the change and that's good to know. So okay, now we have seen yeah, two test cases for a very simple test object. We have uh, executed two tests, we have seen a test report, we have uh, corrected a bug in the test object and we have now two green test cases and the question is now are we finished with testing? And the answer is we should measure the coverage that is reached by these two test cases prior to finish the test. It is very important to measure test coverage or code coverage um, um, at the end of the testing to find out if there are parts of your code which were not executed during the tests. And if you use TESI, it is very easy to measure uh, code coverage, you just say, yeah, I want to measure, measure code coverage. It uh, is here that you select instrumentation and then you can uh, select which coverage measures that you want to measure here. I, I for instance, here select uh, statement coverage, branch coverage and modified condition decision coverage to measure. And um, this would mean that TESI now instruments the code and reruns the tests and in the end you will see which coverage which we have reached by these two test cases. I say execute and then TESI yeah, recreates the test application with instrumentation, re-executes the test cases. Both test cases are still green, so the functional behavior has not changed, uh, but we see here that uh, obviously um, something uh, we have not reached 100% coverage, for instance, here for the, for the statement coverage, for branch coverage, but we can have a closer look on the coverage we have reached by switching to the coverage viewer perspective, which is especially made to show the coverage measures uh, we have uh, measured in, in, in TESI. First, we see a flowchart of our test object and we see that we have executed two test cases, both test cases took the else branch of the first if and then for the second if one time the send branch and one time the else branch was executed. Unfortunately, we see red branches here and also we see red uh, source code lines on, on the, uh, and green source code lines. So red means that something is not executed and I can find out what correlates to this uh, send branch which was not executed and we see this is the send branch of the first if which we did not execute with our two test cases and um, therefore we have only 75% coverage if we look at uh, the branch coverage measure. We could also display statement coverage. You see that in this case all the else branches are gray, so they do not count for coverage measurement and we have a total coverage of 80% statement coverage. Um, but still we have not executed the send branch of the first if. Um, back to branch coverage, I can also find out which path a certain test case took by just marking set test case and I see now that the second test case exactly took this branch here. So I see that the second test case executed the 
then branch of the second if, and I can also see this in, in the source code if I highlight this branch. And what is also possible uh, in the coverage view is I'm able to uh, have this um, flowchart also as a PDF if I want, if I need it for documentation purposes. Okay, what can we do now to um, to uh, remedy this problem? The first thing is we can add a third test case. It's, it should be also clear that we execute a test case where we one is, for instance, three. We will uh, execute this branch here. But Tessie provides also another possibility. Um, I could I could reduce uh, the coverage uh, that I measure um, for this test object um, and by default TESI needs 100% for a green test result but I could also reduce the minimum required coverage for to for instance 70% and if I rerun uh, the, the, the coverage measurement again I will find out that um, that I, give, I get now a different test result for the C1 coverage, the branch coverage. Um, it is now green, but it is not completely green. Um, and as a reason, we will see if we go to the test report, we, we quickly see here um, the coverage we reach is still 75%, <clears throat> but because the minimum coverage required is 70%, we have now to, to uh, a, green, a green result with respect to the branch coverage, but not with respect to the statement coverage and also not with respect to the MCDC coverage, because we have not reduced the minimum required coverage. Let's demonstrate a last feature of TESI. If I go to the uh, test data editor, um, I said there are several ways to um, get test cases into TESI. Uh, I would like to quickly to demonstrate another one. Um, I could delete the second test case. Uh, another one is um, importing test cases from, from an Excel sheet. And for this, I prepare a dummy test case first. I say I have a test case where uh, the start value is zero, the length is 100, and I would like to know if um, if uh, zero is inside, and this is yes. And to import test cases from an Excel sheet, or to create test cases in an Excel sheet, it's always a good idea to first export uh, a test case to an Excel sheet that generates an Excel sheet in the format I need for TESI, and it's very easy to to change then or add test cases. Um, to see the Excel sheet, I have to go to the yeah to the file system, and I have then an Excel sheet with several tabs here. Um, the most important tab or sheet is the values tab. Uh, this value tab currently has two line, three lines. The first line gives me the variable names of the interface. The second line displays if it's input or output variables. And in the third line uh, are the values of the test case that I have exported from TESI. And I can now go ahead and define more test cases by adding lines with values. Uh, for instance, all the test cases should have the length of 100. All test cases should have the start value of uh, zero, and I would like to check if zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight is inside the range. And as an expected result, I use uh, yes, and because all the values should be inside. But I can also change uh, this value to to no. Uh, this test case will be failing because we have specified the wrong expected result. I close this Excel sheet and then I can go back to TESI and then I can import this Excel sheet and this gives me also test data that I have specified inside the Excel sheet and I'm able to execute all the tests immediately and all the tests will get a green result besides the test case number three where we have specified a wrong expected result. Okay, we are now at the end of the presentation, of the live presentation. Um, we have now seen um, that 
how to create test cases for a simple test object in TESI. We have corrected the bug, created test support, we have, we have covered code cover, we have measured code coverage and we have created test cases using Excel. So there's a lot of topics we have not covered in this webinar. Uh, how, for instance, what happens if the interface changes? What, what happens if we would rename the variable we want to v2? Uh, we have not seen how to handle subfunctions because our test object does not have subfunctions. We have not handled defines and includes and pointers and arrays and unions and other data types, floating points, graphics, state machines and so on. This is left for, for, uh, for future webinars. I hope you will attend such future webinars. Uh, we have also not covered, covered big topics like requirement traceability, what you can do with TESI, uh, a method for test case specification, which is called the classification tree method, or uh, integration testing. We have now covered only just unit testing, so these are um, advanced topics which need also to be handled by webinars, separate webinars. So, it's now time to post your question. You can simply type them in in the webinar tool and we will try to answer these questions after the webinar by email. Okay, thank you very much. This is my contact data. You can also have, if you have questions after the seminar when the tool is not longer available, you can write to me and you can find a lot of additional information on TESI uh, on these web links here. So, thank you very much. Hello, Wolfgang. Yeah, thank you very much uh, for this interesting overview on unit test with TESI, Frank. Um, we have a lot of questions coming in, and this will be uh, a lot of work for you this afternoon to answer all of them. Uh, there's one question I may, I may pick up. Uh, it's about a tryout or evaluation version. How can, uh, how is this uh, uh, possible to try uh, out TESI? Uh, I can hear you anymore, so I'll tell all of them, all attendees, uh, you can get an, a TESI evaluation version at hitex.com slash TESI and download uh, the evaluation, evaluation version there. So we're at the end of the webinar. Thank you all, uh, all of you for attending this webinar and we from Hitex, we say goodbye. <laughs>